We heard Order. you in silence. You can hear me in silence. Order. Stop the being racist. Leader of the opposition. Well, it was an offensive and unparliamentary remark, and it should be withdrawn. Can't ever say no to attempting to raise tension in our Order. community. There has to be appropriate vetting. You also need to take into account the circumstances of the war torn nation. He doesn't have confidence in a system which he's overseen. He is being essentially racist with those comments. Peter Dutton is the tin man. He has no heart. So we've been covering over the last 48 hours the, the captain's call from opposition leader Peter Dutton urging the Albanese government for a blanket ban on arrivals from, from Gaza and Palestine. I don't think people should be coming in from that war zone at all. He said that the government couldn't be certain of the allegiances or identities of people arriving from Palestine. He cited a poll that a large proportion of the Palestinian population either support Hamas or are sympathetic to Hamas and citing you know, concerns with safety here in Australia has called for this blanket ban. Are you a heartless, a heartless racist? Do you have any humanity? <laughs> we have to make decisions and they can be tough decisions but the decisions that are in our country's best interest. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese rejected that, those calls outright, uh, accused the opposition leader of Stoking divisions uh, for political gain. This is really a matter for everyone. Community leaders, politicians, the media. Watch your words, watch your actions. There is a direct correlation between inflamed language, inflamed tension and violence. The other sort of facet to this is that the new immigration minister, Tony Burke, he represents a South West Sydney electorate called Watson. The, the interesting kind of undercurrent to this is that Watson has a large, diverse Muslim community who I mean, segments of that have, have made it known that they're not happy with the Albanese government. They feel him and his government haven't gone far enough showing support for Palestine, not going hard enough against certain actions from Israel or bringing in enough Palestinian refugees, making it easy for them to come here. So on one hand, uh, Minister Burke has to reassure the general public that those people coming over from Palestine, that ASIO is vetting them, that those getting visas, that those who are able to resettle over here can do so and that you know, don't pose a threat to the Australian public, but, but balance that with community expectations in his own seat, which is for more Palestinians to come over here, better processes for them, to arrive into Australia from, from Gaza. Um, he's also fielding a challenge from a, a local independent at the next election. Dr Ziad Basuni, a long-standing doctor in that seat from the Muslim community, he's originally from Cairo, um, and he'll run strongly on the pro-Palestine platform. So that's another interesting undercurrent of this, this ongoing debate about the visas. The failure of our government to represent, the failure of our member to represent the values that are being practiced here in the community regarding human rights and what's happening in Gaza. 40,000 people, probably more, have died, have been killed. This has been called a plausible genocide by the ICJ. Yet, not represented, not heard. Yet our government, our MP, are unable to talk about it in Parliament. Not mentioned one by our local MP. The paper talked to Dr Mona Kaskin. She's a Palestinian. She arrived over into Australia five months ago uh, with her family, including her of six, on temporary visas. She was a neurosurgeon in Palestine, lost her home, lost you know, her properties, uh, all her possessions. She arrived over here you know, for safety, seeking a new life um, with her four children and husband. They're now on bridging visas. Um, they're uncertain whether the application for a permanent stay will be approved. She told us yesterday that, speaking for her family and the Palestinian community, that those that have already arrived in Australia, which is about, I believe it's around 2,000 people so far since October 7, she said that she's a neurosurgeon and she said that those thousands who have come already over are highly educated um, doctors, dentists, engineers. They want to start a new life over here and, and, and work for the community um, you know, moving forward. 
She told us that her and her family are staunchly against Hamas. The last thing we need right now is to be, is to be importing more trouble from overseas. And I would simply remind everyone in this government, your first duty as a government is the safety of Australians. When we asked her, did she think people who supported the terror group should come over or could get over? She was very forthright in that she, she didn't think anyone from the community so far was either part of Hamas, supported Hamas, sympathised with Hamas, and she said that it, from her perspective it would be incredibly hard for, for those people to get over the border into Egypt and then also pass ASIO's vetting. The opposition have called for this blanket ban and, and what they want to see is more security checks, so in-person interviews akin to those done in northern Iraq when Australia took in refugees fleeing the, the war in Syria and the Islamic State. The Albanese government has has criticised their approach, their language, what, what they've called divisiveness uh, from the opposition. You know, I, I, I seek to try to bring people together, not always looking for a, a wedge or to divide. Saying that the security checks they do at the moment, ACO do at the moment, are on arrivals from Palestine. It's the exact same they do for other countries, it's, you know, from, from those coming from Ukraine, from those refugees coming from other countries in the region. They say it's, it's uh, airtight, watertight, stops those that may pose a risk to Australia from, from coming over here, but ensures that those fleeing war and danger in Gaza can, can get over to Australia. Zali Stegall accused Mr Dutton of being racist in the chamber and then withdrew that comment. Well, if I could have a clarification, is a description of, of language being racist an unparliamentary remark? Members of the Greens have also said similar statements towards members of the National Party for, for their cause as well. So it's a, particularly, it's a particularly divisive debate that probably does split a lot of Australian voters or Australian communities. Um, it's certainly one I think it's accurate to say that there is political undercurrents to it uh, and it's something that we expect will continue to, to rumble on over the next couple of days, uh, both in Canberra but also in, in Australia's diverse communities. It's, it's one that really is divisive and, and will continue to um, take up debate both in Parliament and across uh, society. The former government is this organisation called the Taliban in Afghanistan and that of course did not stop uh, Australia from <laughs> accepting people from Afghanistan, and rightly so.